Now, coronavirus is now a greater global threat than terrorism, says the World Health Organization, calling it the worst enemy you can ever imagine. Love curdling stuff, which is why the government is right to have passed emergency laws this week to force people into handcuffs if they refuse to go into or stay in quarantine. We need to wake up to this threat because this virus has killed more people than SARS, with the elderly and the vulnerable most at risk. It's already infiltrated schools, doctor surgeries and prisons here, and globally, tens of thousands have been infected with over 1,000 dead. Yet, the government and the Department of Health are still playing it down, still allowing scores from China to come here every day and protecting the identities of carriers as they unwittingly spread the disease. This, despite Professor Pio, the microbiologist who co-discovered Ebola, saying Britain is likely to be hit by a major outbreak. The problem is we live in a country that in recent years hadn't, hasn't been hit by any major viral threat. We watch movies about it, but we think it's sci-fi and that it can't happen to us. But it can, and it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting you reference uh, movies because I think it was Dustin Hoffman in Outbreak where you see people, and that's what I'm afraid makes me really, really cautious of this. It, uh, but, but again, what do you do? It, the idea that we will authorise police officers to put people in handcuffs and effectively seal them in, in the units really, really frightens mm -hmm. me. But if you've got someone, and the only way you're going to contain it... What, so, one point where I am rather concerned, you're, you're suggesting no one more flights in from China? No. The biggest economic... Just as Britain merges well, into an exciting new dawn, yes, we effectively bolt the door... Hang on one second, bolt the door in the face of the country that is worth 17, 20, 25% of the global Until economy. Until it peaks, which is about March, they think. But, but other countries have already closed the doors. The US, Australia, New Zealand, Saudi, they've already closed the doors. Because, you know, this is the thing, and I think, you know, you mentioned handcuffing people, and I get why it looks draconian, but, well, you know... It is draconian. These people, <laughs> these people are walking <laughs> weapons of mass destruction. Oh, Lord. Yes, they are. You know, the thing is, and I keep on hearing stories about, oh, flu every year kills thousands of people. Yes, it does. It kills no, the elderly. But actually, this virus is going to kill more than the elderly. It's going to kill people oh. that have underlying health conditions, Can and that's many... Many, many thousands of people. Can and when I just you say, so, I was just going to say, when you have this Professor Pio, uh, the guy who knows about this stuff, okay. saying Britain is likely to take a major hit, we should listen to him. Yeah, I just what I find interesting about about this subject is that you know last week on this show you had a doctor on who was saying we should all be aware, take precautions, um, keep informed, yeah. but not be sensationalist about it. Wrong. And here we are this week with you going <laughs> lock them up. Because he's wrong. And <laughs> the doctor is exactly what this is my point. The doctor is wrong, Carol. This government have been too passive and they've been proved to be I too passive. I do not agree with that at all. In fact, I am impressed by the way global health mm. agencies have handled this. They've mm. they've kept public awareness. It's a very difficult thing to calibrate. Public, public awareness versus panic is a really difficult thing mm. to calibrate. And the thing about it is that everybody who has, all the cases have been identified, everybody who has it, all the people that they are likely to have, may potentially have passed it on to, have been identified, which means that it is very Yes, we should. It's not, it's not a simple thing, and we should be aware, but the efforts to contain it are significant and serious. Can I just bring in the Director General of the World Health Organization? You mentioned yeah, the yeah. terrorism analogy. He does this. this is Dr. Tedros Rebeisas speaking on Tuesday. A virus can have more powerful consequences than any terrorist action, and that's true. And if the world doesn't want to wake up and consider this enemy virus as public enemy number one, I don't think we will learn from our lessons. Now, can I just suggest perhaps how we could learn from this? We're in, living in an increasingly globalised world where, well, you're right, we are dependent on the Chinese economy, 15 to 20 per cent, whatever it is. And so I think, considering he just himself said it's more yeah. dangerous than terrorism, what perhaps we could do going forward, because whether it's SARS or MERS or now the coronavirus, they are invariably linked to hygiene standards and cross-contamination from certain wild species of animal. We need to clamp down on 
that happening at root. And that may mean, depending, depending regardless of which country it is, uh, that may mean some form of collective action to enforce standards and penalties if you those standards are met. Markets in China. Well, China's already doing that. Actually, they've just started to do that. They've sh shut down, yeah, because I think even they've realised this is going to get out okay. of hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because keep in mind, coronavirus is a third reincarnation of this right. particular virus. SARS and MERS are also coronavirus. It's the same but you know, but well, strains of. You know? Part of the government's advice is they're telling people, you know, if you've been somewhere that would think, you think you might have a problem, self-isolate. Now, what in God's name does self-isolate mean? It's a really cavalier attitude. If you have a family and you come back to your house in, you know, in a street of lots of houses and you're semi-detached, you had whatever, and, and, and you go home and you have, a, you have a, a, a partner and you have kids, how the hell do you self-isolate in a house that maybe has two beds? in a detention centre. No, no, I think, no, no the government right, are telling Karen, people I'm... to self-isolate. Yeah, do do it at home. Uh, well, I should think there should be at home. There should be in a detention centre, yes. You, what, no. how, you get coronavirus and you're put in a detention centre. Well, the centre's oh, where that... Oh. No, we're not a detention. You know, no, this you... thing about self-isolation, I do think that we could it's have more cavalier. public information about what about that what actually that means. Yes. Yes. Do the parents go and give the how food? Does it, how does it work? Like, how does that work? Yes. Yeah. What if you're yeah. sharing a flat? You were mentioning yeah. handcuffs yeah. and laws. The Very reason those common. laws were passed was because a bloke in the Wirral tried to walk out of a quarantine centre where he was staying. Right. He said, I'm out of In terms of what self-isolation means, I mean, the government's already said we've had lots of advice as to what you need to do to prevent the spread of this disease, and that comes down to personal hygiene, washing your hands, dis disinfectant, covering your, covering your mouth when you, covering your mouth when you, when you when you sneeze. So, I mean, me personally, I recently went through, uh, I spent seven hours in Istanbul Airport, which is a massive uh, international um, mm -hmm. transfer hub, mm -hmm. um, and so and I, about three days later. Uh, I was bedbound, shivering for about seven days straight. Um, was this recent? Coughing have recently. You, have you had it? Do you think you've uh, had it? I went to the doctor. I went, I went to the doctors. I went to the doctors yeah. set, set, twice just to make just to make sure, and he gave me the all, gave me the all clear. So I have because not got coronavirus. How long ago but, was but, this? But 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 I I, I, I <laughs> isolated myself in my room for that seven day period. Didn't mm -hmm. see anybody. My, my my flatmate. I did. I didn't really go into close contact with him at all. So self isolation is a thing that you can do, even <laughs> if you live with people. But there has to be advice on it. What is it? No one's been told. No one's. Be given what I don't because it means different things to different See, people. See, if, if, if countries in the world flout human rights standards, if they flout even economic policy, the IMF comes down heavy on them. This particular thing with viruses, we need an international body, maybe the World yeah. Health Organization, that enforces standards on hygiene and then penalties for not sticking to that. Because, by the way, MERS, which is the Middle Eastern version of SARS, I mean, it's passed from camel to human beings. And I've seen videos of Bedouins drinking camel urine, thinking it's some form of medicine for them. You know, there needs to be standards set. Now, of course, the, you can't do much about a lone person doing that, but the live markets who you refer to why, can be clamped down. Why on, weren't you given Steve Walsh's name a week ago? I don't because, think no, should no, have no, been given his name at all. all. He's, the, not, he's the so-called super infected. Yes, he's the, the super person infected. Who's from a because not to name and shame, of course not. But there will be people who have been close to him, who have been near him, who need to know so they can report to a centre. They can be but tested. Why shouldn't we know his identity, Rachel? Well, because it we creates should. stigma and panic so and scapegoating. And the thing about it is that, listen, he, this particular individual did everything that he was supposed to do. Everybody who was potentially at risk was tracked and identified. Well, and I feel like you if you know? name people, then you not only then that you start well, stigmatizing well. people, but you create a sense of panic when the reality is that in his case, it was actually managed and contained. He infected with the you, 11 people yet, in Europe yet, who got it. And you've effectively called them a, a weapon of mass destruction. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and, they and, are and, 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 and we've got to also remember, they are. in terms of what you're suggesting, is it's, 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 it's one. Yes, it's, it's clear. He's, he's back you can't suggest both things. Either your plan is that we is that we forcibly isolate people or, or, we, or, we, or we name and shame them. Femme, Doing both doesn't make sense. We only forcibly isolate them if they won't go into quarantine. We don't just grab them and chuck once, them in and lock them up. Which happens once. That. Well, that's why they had to pass a law, Rachel. Well, in case on the basis people... of one case, yes, they passed and, this yes. draconian law. You, you, you see, you're like the person this guy is talking about on the screen here. You're not getting it. You're not getting the potential. You're not getting I what absolutely Peter get it. Pierce I just says. have a different reaction to you. I absolutely share your sense of concern. I just have a different reaction well, we to can't it. be so let's talking be, about let's the civil about liberties that. and the human rights of a guy when when the rest of the, the the planet is at risk we can't he it's not about naming and shame it's about contacting the people who he was close to that's all